In today's experiment, we will be testing various substances for the presence of an enzyme called amylase. Amylase catalyzes the breakdown of starch molecules, so in order to test for it, we're going to need a bunch of starch molecules. Now fortunately, that's very easy to come by because due to a quirk of the manufacturing process, some of the cellulose molecules inside of common computer paper gets transformed into starch, so normal computer paper just has a bunch of starch already in it. We're also going to need a way to detect whether or not starch molecules have been broken down or whether or not they've been left alone. But fortunately, iodine, like you can get from the pharmacy, reacts with starch. It turns bluish black on contact. So here's going to be our simplified experiment. We are going to apply residues from various substances, food, saliva, that kind of thing, to the paper. If the substance is amylase positive, if it contains amylase, when we apply iodine to it afterward, it will remain brown. Iodine is naturally brown. If the substance that we applied to the paper is amylase negative, doesn't contain amylase, the iodine that we wipe on it afterward is going to turn black as it ordinarily would when it, we just apply it to starch. To set up this experiment, I'm going to take my piece of computer paper, I'm going to draw some rectangles on it, I'm going to label each one for the substance that I'm going to place inside of that rectangle. So I have two negative controls, dry and wet. Dry I'm just going to leave entirely alone, wet I'm going to put pure water, just tap water into really. I'm also going to test two different types of saliva, human and canine saliva. Two different types of bananas, a green banana, very very fresh green banana, still very starchy, and a ripe banana with spots. I'm going to test two different kinds of ginger as well, fresh ginger root and uh, powdered ginger that I've mixed with some water to see if I get a different result. I'm also going to test some wild cards here, a mushroom that I got from the store and a red pepper that I got from my garden. Now that all the setup is done, let's grab some cotton swabs and collect some residue. Human saliva should contain a large amount of amylase because our diets are pretty rich in starchy foods. However, dogs are descended from wolves, which are a good deal more carnivorous, so should we expect to see the same results from my saliva versus Edward's saliva? Consider that when you first bring a banana back from the store, it's very, very starchy, and you probably don't want to eat it right away. Everyone has that perfect level of ripeness, right, where the starches slowly convert to the sugar over time. Well, it's enzymes that are facilitating that process. So which phase of the banana's life do you think has a higher proportion of amylase? The part where it's very, very starchy, or the part where all of that starch has been converted over to sugar? Where has the amylase been more active? I have been told that ginger contains a high proportion of amylase, so I was curious to test it. But I was also interested to see whether or not the same was true of powdered ginger, dried ginger. Because enzymes are proteins, and proteins are vulnerable to what's called denaturation. When they dry out or when they're exposed to heat or acidic conditions or any number of inappropriate conditions, they can lose their shape and therefore lose their enzymatic activity. They can become non-functional as a result. So I was curious if fresh ginger versus powdered rehydrated ginger would have the same effect. Now, the mushrooms actually proved a little bit difficult because they're so dry on the inside I couldn't just swab them with a cotton swab and get a good residue on the paper, so I ended up taking a small piece of the mushroom and applying it directly to the page. And I ended up doing something similar with the pepper as well. Once all of the residues have dried on the paper, it's time to apply our indicator, which is the iodine solution. In order to apply the iodine solution, I'm going to use a technique that I learned from my old art teacher. That is, we're going to make sure that the cap is attached firmly to the iodine solution bottle. We're going to shake it up, 
And then we're going to remove the cap, turn it upside down, and we are just going to apply our Q-tip to the inside of the cap. There's plenty of solution in there, waste not, want not. And we're going to put one streak of iodine across each rectangle. Now, as a reminder, if the iodine turns black, that means starch is present. And if starch is present, then amylase did not break down the starch. So black iodine means amylase negative. Meanwhile, if it turns any other color, if it remains brown or it has a kind of yellowy red appearance, then that substance is amylase positive.